What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of I Said What I Said here on Steelers Sanctuary. I'm, your, I'm Dave Ribeiro from SteelersSanctuary.com and the Steelers Sanctuary Podcast. The topic this week for I Said What I Said is PFF is a joke. I woke up this morning with, intending to do a totally different topic for this segment, but PFF comes up with their top five defensive players from this past Sunday, and shocker, no Steelers on this list. Um, let's go over their top five first. Let's get into it right away. Um, number one overall for them, Miles Garrett. I know. We're all shocked here. Um, he had a good game. Four tackles, four tackles for a loss, two sacks, and a pass defended. Miles Garrett is a very good football player. The absolute fascination PFF has, has with this guy is just beyond me. He's, he's a very good defensive lineman, but they continually rate him over TJ Watt every chance they get. And this week's no exception. Listen, definitely deserving to be on a top five list. Number one overall, eh, I don't know. Number two, Jerry Hughes. This is a good game. Three tackles, one tackle for a loss, two sacks, a pass defended, and an interception. Not, a, not something we expected from Jerry Hughes at this point in his career with the Texans, but he had a monster game. game. Give him credit. Second overall, I can live with it. Jeffrey Simmons from the Tennessee Titans. This one's a little sketchy, too. I mean, six tackles. Two sacks and two tackles for a loss. Sounds pretty good. But then you dig in a little deeper and you realize Saquon Barkley ran for 164 yards on the Titans defense and a touchdown. Ran up and down the field all over him. And Jeffrey Simmons is an interior defensive line for the Titans. This is supposed to be one of his responsibilities, run defense. That's a fail, right? It's a fail in my book. Uh, fourth overall, Max Crosby. Ten tackles. Solid. One tackle for a loss. Goose eggs the rest of the way. No interceptions, no passes defended, nothing. Fifth overall, this one's really, really strange to me. I had to, even, I had to go look up his stats twice because I thought I was reading it wrong. Chris Jones had one tackle and one pass defended on Sunday against the Arizona Cardinals without DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know what I'm missing here. 93 point something rating from PFF. I get it. I didn't watch every snap. I didn't watch. I only watched highlights of this game. So Chris Jones could have had a good game. I'm sure he did, but Jesus Christ, one tackle on the day. Let's go to the Steelers players. First off, Minka Fitzpatrick, man, 14 tackles, a pick six, another pass defended, and maybe the biggest play of all day, a blocked extra point when the game was about over for the Steelers. He saved them, forced the game into overtime. And if you watch this game from Minka, he was a, a nuisance to the Bengals all game long. Finishing tackles, hitting players, laying people out. He was, in my opinion, the single biggest defensive influence of the week, by far. This is a mystery to me. Uh, let's switch over to TJ Watt again. Six tackles, one sack, three tackles for a loss, an interception, and he had another sack that was taken away by a penalty. He could have had two on the day. Compare that to Max Crosby. Ten sacks, a tackle for loss, and nothing else all day. What the hell is going on? How do you have Max Crosby and Chris Jones over TJ Watt? In what world does that make any sense whatsoever? Minka Fitzpatrick, Defensive Player of the Week by the NFL. Defensive Player of the Week. Not in the top five players graded by PFF. Who's doing the grading over there? Who's... It's, it's just mind-boggling to me. We know that PFF has sort of this weird bias against the Steelers. I don't know if it's social media-driven. Like, you know when you diss a Steelers player, your traffic just explodes. We all know that trick. All the, all the big outlets do it. All the national media does it. ESPN in there. You know, daytime sports hacks do it. Everyone does it. We get it. It drives traffic. But your credibility is at, at stake. When you make a list like this, and you don't have the AFC Defensive Player of the Goddamn Week on your top five defensive players. I had an argument with someone from PFF that I know on Twitter. He was trying to give me this nonsense about you don't, you're not taking penalties into consideration and in every snap of every player. I didn't watch every game. No, I didn't. But I don't have to watch every game, every snap of Max Crosby to tell me that he did not have the impact on the game that TJ Watt had. 
I don't have to watch every snap of Chris Jones to tell me he had one tackle and one pass defended. And Minka had 14 more tackles from him than he did as a safety. I don't need to watch the whole game to tell me that. <laughs> it's nonsense. PFF's credibility is shot at this point. Listen, we all use them for their grading system because it's impossible to watch every player every week. When you're writing stuff like I do on my blog, or you're just trying to figure out a free agent that your team's looking at or whatever, you, you, you go to PFF grades. But now I even question that. Why are we doing this when they put out lists like this that are completely farcical? It's time to take a hard look at PFF and what they're doing over there. I said what I said. PFF's a joke. And I'm sticking by it. If you want to see more um, content like this, head on over to our YouTube page. Give us a subscription, man. We, we really appreciate it. We just started doing this a few weeks ago. It's really starting to take off. And the more subscribers, the better. We'd really appreciate that. Um, check out our podcast. Our podcast is only a couple months old. That's growing as well. We're really doing good. Steal a Sanctuary podcast. Um, check us out on Twitter. Um, I'm at SteelersSank16. Uh, my partner is David Korob. He's at M underscore Korob. Um, yeah, we're all over social media. We're all over everything. Uh, the site's growing. Give us, check us out. Uh, email us at daver at SteelersSanctuary.com. Tell us if you like this or other segments, if you like the podcast, if you like the blog. We really love the um, feedback from you guys. Um, my partner David should be having another one of these this week. And we'll have our podcast on Friday on early Saturday morning. So check us out. Thanks.